Hello and welcome back to another episode of Internal Rambles. This is your girl Rochelle and this is another installment of The Male Perspective with Gio. Gio, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me. Good. Glad to have you again on the podcast. Today we have a really great topic. I'm actually really excited about this one. We are talking about veganism and vegetarianism and maybe plant-based we'll get to but just those i don't know if you would call them like dietary habits or not sure what lifestyles lifestyles um so the reason i don't know why i decided to but i think it's a good um there's a lot of misconceptions about um both of those and um me and geo are not medical professionals or dietitians we're coming from this from our own personal experience geo is vegan and i was vegetarian very briefly once upon a time so um i guess we could start off with what is um vegan and what the definition of that is well um I'm not 100% sure on the exact definition, but I think most people would view veganism as um, when you do not consume any kind of animal product. Um, And, you know, based on the person, people have like varying degrees of how um, strict they are. But technically, if it comes from an animal, then if you're vegan, you're not supposed to eat it. So, of course, that would include any kind of dairy um, any kind of meat, any kind of seafood, um, even uh, honey from bees. Some people are, you know, are that strict. Um, so it's basically if it comes from an animal in any capacity, even including some type of like laden ingredients or something like that, um, especially if you're eating like processed stuff, you know, there's going to be other, you know, um, ingredients in it, then it would not qualify as being vegan. And then uh, vegetarianism is a little different. So being a vegetarian, you don't eat meat or fish, but you still can um, eat dairy and other animal products. So it's not as, um, I don't know, I guess you could say restricted of a diet, um, but you're pretty much just eating um, vegetables and uh, things like that. So, um, Gio, can you talk a little bit about um, when you started um, the vegan lifestyle and what made you decide to to start becoming a vegan? Yeah, so um, essentially I had been considering doing a detox or cleanse um, just for like health reasons. Like I got, you know, kind of realized that, you know, from time to time you have to give your body a break and, it, you know, has to be able to devote Um, energy towards healing your organs and, you know, other parts of your body. Um, And if you're having um, chronic health problems, especially things like having trouble sleeping, um, headaches uh, for women, like menstrual problems, um, for guys, like uh, kind of, um, how can I put it, Uh, like testosterone-based problems, like uh, erection, you know, problems, different things like that. A lot of times it can be helped um, by doing a real detox and a cleanse um, of your organs, your cells and everything. So I was looking um, to do that. And then it just so happened that I was having a conversation with a friend slash coworker at the time. um, And she was about to do the same thing. It was around, I think, November of 2017 if i'm not mistaken so we decided to do it together um the one that we did was the dr sabi one which is like at the time i haven't done that specific one in a while but at the time i think you had to buy like 300 something dollars worth of pills and you had to eat what is called like alkaline which is even like i would consider like a different kind of thing even than regular veganism um, where you only eat uh, specific foods based on the pH that they cause inside of your body and things like that. But um, so anyway, so we um, we did the the cleanse together. Um, admittedly, I didn't 
do the best job in terms of the diet part. I did pretty good. Um, I was eating meat up until this point, by the way. So I would, you know, pretty much kind of try to stay away from like anything super fatty, like red meats and porks. But once in a while, I would eat even those things. But I mostly ate um, like turkey, chicken, fish, you know, type of deal. But um, so I, I didn't do any of that. I didn't eat any cheese or like dairy or nothing. But the alkaline part was tough for me, mostly because I didn't truly grasp the concept at the time. But um, in any event, once the once the detox was coming to an end, um, I guess I just figured if eating these certain things was causing me harm, I didn't really see a reason to like go a whole, I think it was a month of not eating them and then just turn back around and just start eating them again. It just didn't really seem to make sense. So I didn't plan on necessarily making it like a lifelong thing or I didn't have a specific time, but I just said to myself that I'd like to see how far I can go continuing to try to eat what I perceived at the time to be healthy, which um, a lot of things I was eating at that time weren't healthy. I'll talk about that maybe later, but um, that's pretty much how I came into it. So I did the detox. I just decided to try to continue to eat as healthy as possible. And um, since then, I haven't really gone back. So I've been, you know, vegan ever since. Yeah, that kind of is similar to what happened to me. I never planned to become vegetarian. I wanted to do a cleanse. I was having significant um, digestion issues. And so I was like, well, let me do a cleanse to see if that helped. And so I did a, I think it was either a three day or a five day juice cleanse. And um, I did, I did really well on it. Like I definitely didn't, I stuck to it. And I literally lost the taste for meat. Like I had no desire after the three or the five days. And this was back in 2019 I I had no desire to eat meat and so I was like well let me see how long I can do this for and so the goal was to do it for a year um and I lasted 10 months that's pretty good <laughs> um, so I was proud of myself because I I was I, I didn't think I I I could go that long but 10 months was good and so um yeah I just wanted to see um, if I could do it. So yeah, I was vegetarian for 10 months and, um, I can get more into, of what occurred during that time, but yeah, so, um, really interesting just to kind of, uh, to become vegetarian and unintentionally become vegetarian. So, um, but yeah, that's kind of what happened to me. So, Gio, um, what are some of the, um, benefits would you say of uh, the vegan lifestyle for you well i think that one thing that i feel like is important to clarify is that vegan and healthy are not synonyms so there's a ton of food that is vegan but is very 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 unhealthy that means like all those um, substitute meats, well, the vast majority of them, especially the any ones that you buy from a store. Um, there's like a brand Hillary's that honestly, it doesn't really taste that great, at least to me, although some people I know like it. But that one has like pretty minimal like processing and like bad ingredients. I think um, everything is either organic or close to it. But that's pretty much kind of like one of the only ones. But um one of the important things that you have to do is, especially if you're buying processed stuff, which you really should avoid no matter what kind of diet you have. But um, with processed stuff, you have to really start looking at the back of the package and not the front. I mean, like instead of just picking something up and being like, oh, this is vegan chicken. This must be healthy. Turn it around and see that it's made from like concentrated gluten, which is, um, shoot, it's not coming to me what, uh, what that's uh, called but maybe it'll come back to me in a minute or that it has like a ton of soy or that it has that um pea protein like these different you know these different things and those are just a few of them like there's a ton of uh of garbage all those like super long like 10 15 letter you know words and things um if you see all that type of stuff it's probably 
not healthy, you know, so um, anything synthetic and whatnot. So if you are eating like a uh, vegan ice cream regularly and vegan cookies and vegan um, processed burgers and pizzas and hot dogs and processed soy based this and that and cold cuts and a lot of um, another big thing that uh, got got me is um, substituting carbs you know because you go out to a restaurant somewhere and most restaurants are not vegan and I mean it's kind of coming around where some have like unhealthy vegan options but at least it's like something quote-unquote vegan and if you're just going out once in a while it might be the time that you treat yourself or you know have a little cheat or whatnot but um especially when I started there was not many vegan places or even restaurants that had vegan options so what can you really do what doesn't have like meat in it well, first, a lot of the stuff is probably cooked in the same grease as meat. But a person like me, I was never like super, super strict to that extent. So I would kind of overlook that. Um, but then I'd have to just basically pick a carb like French fries, uh, spaghetti, rice, like, you know, some variation of like those types of things. And, you know, eating too much carbs is uh, is not good, especially like bad carbs, like processed, you know, um, types of carbs. But now to the good part, if you are eating actually actual healthy foods, things like um, ancient grains like quinoa, armorith, kamu, spelt, um, uh, I feel like I'm missing some. Uh, there's a couple other two that are not coming to me, but um, you're eating like actual vegetables and fruits um, with seeds. You're eating mushrooms. Um, these different uh, nuts uh, in particular, even some of the nuts they claim are like not good for you. Um, so some people say you're really only supposed to eat like walnuts and the other ones are not even really nuts. They're legumes, which have starch. But, um, you know, you're eating beans and, you know, different things that, in my personal opinion, just for me, my lifestyle, um, I'm not, I don't ever tell myself like I would never eat alkaline or I'd never, you know, eat like only specific types of, of foods, but it is very tough. So I just like, I just basically, I just don't beat myself up. Like I do put into my mind to try and have it as a goal to like eat 100% healthy, but I also am not like constantly beating myself up or like torturing myself. Um, because I feel like you're mind and spirit are just as important as your body. So if you're just eating like bland stuff or things that you don't enjoy ever, and you know, it's good for your body per se, but like, it just kind of sucks because, you know, food is a pleasurable thing. And it's, you know, especially if you don't drink or you're not like a sex addict or a gambling addict, or you don't do drugs, it's like kind of like pleasure. It's like kind of hard to come by, but, um, but yeah, but if you are eating the actual healthy foods, you see a lot of benefits. Um, definitely sleep is like a big one. And when you sleep, that's when your body does most of the healing. So anytime that you're sleeping well, um, that's going to give you a good chance of being healthy. Um, definitely uh, like bloating um, and weight loss and different things like that. Um, you see when you're eating properly. Um, just kind of like overall things. A lot of people too, like it depends, like I never had like diabetes or high blood pressure or, um, you know, any kind of like chronic illnesses, but a lot of people that do have those kinds of illnesses, they don't realize that a lot of it is what they eat. So when you do switch and you start to eat cleaner or healthier, however you want to phrase it, um, a lot of times people see their weight go down, they see their blood pressure come down, they see their blood sugar get under control, you know, these different things. Um, some people even see other stuff like reversal of hair loss or their um, their sex drive goes up or just their overall energy and their virility and different things. It all, you know, it varies kind of from person to person, but um, usually you kind of just find at least a good median of like health you know especially when you get you know up into my age like close to 40 you know the the you can't just eat whatever you want anymore and you can't just stay up and you know all night or try to operate off a of minimal sleep it's just a lot of stuff you just can't you know can't really do anymore so um being 
the healthier you are, the easier it's going to, you know, make it for you once you start, you know, getting up into the years as well. So um, those are pretty much the main things I would say. Yeah, and I think for me, just those 10 months of being vegetarian, I, it just introduced vegetables into my life because I definitely was not eating vegetables. Like I would have a salad a month and thought I was doing something like, so I just learned different, um, to love like, um, different vegetables, cauliflower and Brussels sprouts. I mean, I wasn't eating Brussels sprouts when I was a kid, like, you know, um, and so just, um, being able to, um, learn new dishes to cook that were really good and find, ways to make vegetables enjoyable um, and then fruit as well but more so the vegetables and then um, I think the benefit was I did see an improvement like with the di the digestion issues and um, so that was um, uh, definitely a benefit for me and then um, I think also just like you said just having it I definitely was um, more energetic and you you didn't feel so bogged down like when you're eating like pizza and burgers and all that stuff it's definitely such heavy food so i definitely felt more energetic uh, energetic during that time so those are kind of like the major um benefits when i was i can remember when i was vegetarian um, those 10 months so what are um the challenges of the vegan lifestyle and maintaining that that eating habit I think the main challenge is the men mentality, you know, like a lot of people, they just, and it's understandable, you know, because there's a lot of uh, emotion tied into foods, you know, like mm -hmm. certain food, it might've been something that your mom and your grandma made when you were a kid, or, you know, you were used to your dad or granddad or uncles barbecuing and, you know, different things or whatever. Um, and there's a lot of good memories tied to it. And that's, and that's even separate from it. Some, a lot of foods literally being addictive because they're so sugary or so salty. I should say sweet, so sweet or so salty um, and whatnot and accessibility, you know, as well. Like a lot of times when you're eating healthy, it seems at least like it's like laborious, but it really kind of depends on how you prep and like how you do what you do. But I right, maybe I'll talk about that later, but um, people cannot, people seem to, and myself included, like a lot of, a term I hear a lot is, man, what can you eat? You know, type of thing. And it's like, you kind of know what you're supposed to eat. You just don't want to eat that. Like, I feel like when people are saying that, it's like, why, like, why, oh, man, you can't eat Burger King. You can't eat that. It's like, no, like, <laughs> like, nah, like if you want to be healthy, like you can eat it. Like, you know, literally physically you can, you know, put it into your mouth, but if you're trying to be healthy, then no, that's not something really that you should ever eat, you know, and if you do, it should be like super minimal. But um, I feel like people have a tough time coming to terms with that. They just basically just been lied to like all like 99% of the stuff that, you know, um, I grew up eating as a kid was like crap unhealthy terrible stuff and most of the worst stuff is the stuff that's for kids like all those cereals are terrible almost every cereal has um tsp which is a trisodium phosphate which is a, a chemical used to strip decks um like your patio deck or something like that um they a lot of them have like other little hidden things in it, like lead and different just like awful stuff that like the hidden stuff and but even the obvious stuff that's like listed on the back is like horrific like there's no actual food in it like what food is like in a pop tart like what like the whole thing is a chemical really you know you could argue maybe that there's like a little wheat but by the time they get done processing it it's not even wheat anymore so there's like literally nothing there's no nutrients in like tang and sunny d and soda sorry i, I mean pop um, these different, you know, all these different foods, like McDonald's, like when I was a kid, McDonald's was like a treat. It was like such a big deal. Like, okay, it's Friday. You was good all week. 
we're going to go to McDonald's or we're going to order Pizza Hut or go to Pizza Hut. Like back in the day when Pizza Hut had like the book club thing and the salad bar and the pizza bar and all that stuff like that was like special times and good moments and a reward, you know, but in reality, it wasn't really any of that, you know, um, in terms of the food itself, maybe the moment or the, you know, or whatnot. But um, I think that's the, the, the challenging part is divorcing yourself from the idea that somehow these pleasurable foods that you love to eat can't possibly be bad for you. And there must be some other answer. There must be some something that you're just not seeing that somehow makes pork chop and, you know, um, super cheesy, this and that. Somehow there's something that did it. This is healthy, good stuff for you. And it's just they're, they're, everybody else is just like crazy that, you know, says otherwise. Um, like me, like one of my, you know, favorite, not, not one of my absolute favorite food is pizza. I haven't had, you know, real pizza since 2017. So it's like, it sucks, like, in a way, you know, because I miss it and I love pizza and vegan pizza just isn't really that good. You know, I eat it just because it's like a substitute, you know, of the feeling that, you know, I miss or the food that I miss. But in reality, it never, ever tastes the same or like even really even close to it. So, um, you know, it's like, you know, things like that. Um, but I, I at least feel lucky in the sense that I can be honest with myself and say, yes, you want that. Yes. It tastes delicious. It back then. And even if you ate it now, it probably still tastes delicious, but it also be really bad for you. So it's like, what's more important, like some few minutes of pleasure or your health, because you know, the, the few minutes they add up, you know, because once you start down the path of like eating, whatever, um, like I said, the foods are addictive. So it's difficult, you know, to stop. Um, so one of the challenges that I had, um, in the beginning was one, not realizing the difference between vegan and healthy. And then I had, um, eating too much carbs, I say would be number two. And then number three, one of the big ones that only until recently, I even been starting to make any headway is like having a sweet tooth, um, eating vegan ice creams and vegan, you know, uh, donuts and this different things or whatever. Oreos technically are vegan, regular plain Oreos. They don't have no milk, milk or no animal products in them. Um, you know, eating these different things. It, and then once and then once you're vegan and you're eating a lot of carbs and then you're also have a sweet tooth, it's going to make the sweet tooth worse because the carbs are going to feed the sweet tooth because a lot of it is um, candida, you know, uh, bacteria that's in your stomach that's actually a good bacteria but when it overgrows it causes a lot of health problems too um but yeah so those those are like the the tough things but it all starts kind of with your state of mind like you know you have to be able to kind of like battle with yourself on a daily basis to say yes this thing would taste good yes i'd love to eat this or eat that but at the end of the day i want to be healthy more I want to be able to go upstairs comfortably. I want to be able to do physical, you know, things I like to do, whether it's going for a walk or jogging or um, riding a bike or playing some type of sport, whatever the case may be. And I just want to not just live a long life because, I, you know, it's plenty, especially with, you know, Melanie to people. Um, a lot of people have elders that even done crazy stuff like are done hard drugs or abused alcohol for their whole lives but they still made it to 80 90 it's like okay yeah you made it to 80 90 but it's like all your organs is failing and you have like a very low quality of life so i don't want to just live for a long time i want to like have a quality you know to my life you know that i'm living so um I think that's, but it all starts in your mind to go back to your original question. I think that's the biggest challenge, hurdle, obstacle by far is coming to terms with yourself that if this, these are the healthy foods, we all know what the healthy foods are, whole grains. Um, if even if you eat meat, lean proteins, you know, mix in some, some plant-based proteins, whether it be nuts, beans, whatever, whatever, um, 
anything dairy like we're not cows so like i know people try to make some argument and different things like that but at the end of the day like a human being is not a cow and an adult human being is not a baby so milk is for babies of the same species so you're not a baby you're not a cow it's weird to eat dairy it's just as weird um it doesn't really make sense but um you know these different things so to just come to terms with even if you fail like hey I messed up and I had a milkshake today. Cool. Okay. But then tomorrow, what you going to do? You know, that's the way I look at it. Like, you know, like I said, I try to avoid beating myself up, but I also don't make excuses and justify and rationalize, you know, when I do screw up, I'm just honest, but then I try to just, you know, move forward from there. So, yeah. I think the um, biggest challenge for me was at the time I was working overnight so it just was hard to make meals and cook <laughs> it's just like what am I eating today and I just was so used to just grabbing something from the local grocery store and you just can't really grab vegetarian I mean maybe more so now but you couldn't really grab vegetarian meals um they weren't as accessible and then also that was around the time where the impossible burgers were starting to like become all the rage even burger that was the time when burger king um had theirs and you know i know i and i did you know would eat those sometimes and i'm like i know y'all frying these or grilling these in the same meat grease <laughs> y'all ain't got no separate grease for these or however they make them like y'all cross contaminating so um i tried not to um eat those but i i did um but it just was like sometimes you just need those quick meals so I think that was the challenge. It wasn't um, like, oh my God, give me meat. Um, it was just more so just what am I going to eat and just trying to be creative so that um, I felt that I was satiated, but also I was excited to, to eat um, that way and how to make the meals stretch longer so that I wasn't necessarily cooking every day because that just was impossible to those, those are probably the main <clears throat> challenges for me. Um. Yeah, and see, and that's the thing, too. Like, uh, you know, a person would think some, would think that the issue with an Impossible Burger would be the potential of, like, it being mixed with the meat grease. And, like, yeah, that's not good, and you wouldn't want that. But the real issue is that Impossible is, like, basically straight mm -hmm. soy in water with seasonings and soy is really really bad for you and it throws your hormones all out of whack um it's full of it like sends your estrogen levels through the roof so if you're a man clearly that can cause you a ton of problems it could cause you sexual problems it could cause you to go bald it can cause you to develop um gynecomastia or like man boobs or whatever you want to call them um and even for women like even though women have naturally more estrogen than tes than testosterone both sexes have both um hormones so even as a woman having your estrogen shot through the roof is not you know is not a good thing so and that's what i felt like is is the main thing people should try to focus on is finding something that works for them and that is healthy like the healthiest purest form of it like a lot of vegan people probably wouldn't admit this, but I will. I think that if you're some person and you are eating meat, even though it's disgusting and I don't care for it, even when I, you know, before I was vegan, I never liked milk or dairy. I didn't like yogurt or no, none of the milk or none of that stuff. It tasted gross to me. But um, if you're getting like organic stuff or even especially if the dairy is fermented, because like fermented things are good for your stomach, like sauerkraut, kimchi, yogurt, all of those things have like probiotics and prebiotics that help balance the flora in your gut. But um, to I think it would be better to eat meat and dairy that is like healthy and pure like you're going to some local farm you're getting um something that's like not pasteurized um because pasteurization ruins the nutrients and foods too um which is like the heating process they they use to uh preserve um foods so um and make them last longer but that like kills the nutrients so um you know eating 
truly healthy like those like i said those lean meats you go to a farm you're getting like actual like beef or chicken or pork even whatever like from a farmer and it's not all like they're not shooting with antibiotics or like whatever you know that they're doing a you know a good process and with how they're maintaining the animals i think that is better than eating impossible burgers and french fries and oreos and like you know you could really jam yourself up and do a lot of damage to yourself just being stuck on like these key words and you probably remember this like coming up as a kid all they do is just change the phrasing of these things like i remember it was a something was healthy if it was diet or if it was light or um if it's uh gluten free or um uh, with, uh, organic is another one. Vegan now is, of course, one. Like, you know, but there's been different terms and they switch and change them up. Um, but, like, it's not healthy. Like, they they may be telling you one specific thing that's not in the, um, you know, the ingredients. But what about all the other stuff that is? That's not going to be on the front of the package. You got to flip it around and look at the back. Like, I remember when my mom, when I was young, my mom, she would eat um those healthy choice uh microwave dinners there's literally nothing healthy about healthy choice like it's a bunch of garbage processed food that's frozen and then you put in a microwave which microwave and stuff is super unhealthy too again kills the nutrients in the um in the food you can even look up on youtube there's multiple videos of uh they'll take two plants and they'll water one with like just regular water that nothing's been done to it. And then they'll water one with water that's been put in the microwave. The microwave water plant, it dies almost immediately because my that's how microwave works. Like it's not really people not supposed to be consuming stuff that was in uh, microwave. But in any event, um, you know, she, you know, would eat that like thinking that it was healthy just because the box and the name was called healthy choice. And they might put something on like, oh, this is low fat. This is low calorie. This is gluten free or like whatever the case may be. But that doesn't make it healthy. Like something isn't healthy by default just because it's vegan or dairy free or like, you know, so on and so forth. Um, So, yeah. So I just feel like it, like they play a lot of games with food. Um, in the way that they market food and different things like that. And it's up to you to one, come to terms with that, that you're basically being, not basically, you're being poisoned by food, the food that you eat. And that just because you don't drop dead instantly from eating something doesn't mean that it's good for you or that it isn't harming you over a long period of time. Um, you know, even a lot of diseases that they claim are like genetic and stuff like that. A lot of times when somebody decides to start eating differently, like because a lot of oftentimes your grandmother has diabetes and then your mom has diabetes, but it's because your grandma fed your mom the same things that she ate. And then, you know, your mom will feed it to you. So everybody will have diabetes, but it's not like diabetes is something that's just baked into your DNA or something like that. Is because you are having the same diet. And if you would change the diet, oftentimes people will either never develop those illnesses or if they have them, they'll be able to make them go away because you can heal yourself, you know, with things that you eat. Um, so but I just think that regardless of how you eat, you need to focus on is this healthy and is this working for me? And am I feeling good and whatnot? Um because that's really what matters, not the one or two things that aren't in it. Like, oh, this doesn't have milk or this doesn't have meat. That's not as important as overall is the particular food healthy. And one thing that I, that I noticed, and maybe you may have noticed this too, is that a lot of times you don't even realize how bad you feel until you feel better. So if you've been like super uh, overweight or you've been having high blood pressure or you know, high blood sugar, or whatever, for like five, 10 years, you've just become acclimated with like having a hard time either going to sleep or waking up, feeling drowsy throughout the day, your knees and joints hurting, you can't go up steps, you can't really move or do nothing physical, you just be you just get used to that. And something really, really bad has to happen to your body for you to even notice it. But once you 
give your body a break and you detox and you start to feel better, then you could you start to feel tiny things. Like I remember I realized that before I would get like a cold, the first thing that would happen is that my knees would start hurting, like going up steps in particular. Like I just I just started noticing it took me a couple times, but then after a while I kind of noticed like man. Every time my knees start hurting, then a little, maybe like a week, two weeks later, I get a cold. Like, it, you can't notice stuff like that if your knees just constantly hurt. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I just think that, you know, focusing on uh, being healthy is more important than focusing on, like, it not having this or not having that or being free of, you know, this or that other thing. Um, one of the questions I used to get when I was vegetarian <clears throat> is, um, how do you get your protein if you're not eating meat? Um, so uh, I'll ask that to you and then I'll answer that. Yeah, so, well, first of all, if you're not like lifting weights or like some type of athlete or something like that, you don't need astronomical amounts of protein. That's just number one, like, off the bat then secondly i don't think people realize that all of the muscular animals well most of them the the of the biggest animals the the bear the um the elephant the hippo the rhino the horse the bull like these animals are all either vegetarian or herbivore or omnivore i think is a technical term when they are like have a plant-based diet so like a bull is like one of the biggest, most muscular animals. Like it's just literally rip, rip, rippling with muscles and it doesn't eat any kind of meat. Same thing with the horse. So, and that's because the original source of all protein is plants. So um, if you are eating, for instance, um, leafy greens have a ton of protein. Um, nuts have a ton of protein. Um so some of the other foods that are like unusual that have a lot of protein um i don't want to hold it up but it's not maybe it'll come to me in a minute but um there's a ton of plant-based foods that have even oats oats are like relatively high in protein um so it's like if you're just a regular person with like an office job or you just like have like minimal physical activity like as long as you incorporate in particular, one of the best sources, like I said, is the leafy, oh, beans. How could I forget beans? Um, beans and leafy greens into your diet, you're going to have plenty of protein. You don't have to, like, just be a regular person just typing at a computer and you need, like, a thousand milligrams of protein a day like a bodybuilder. And there's even vegan bodybuilders and professional athletes. They just augment their diet and they just, um, the same way, like, an athlete consumes more calories than a normal person you know protein in, included in that they just do the same thing they just up their their protein and whatnot so there's tons of places to get um protein from that are not meat or even dairy based yeah that's it you know i would just uh, google which vegetables um had proteins and just try to make meals that way um so you know the Greens, and then also this isn't the most healthy is, but I would incorporate um, protein shakes into my diet um, as well. So because I just didn't really know, I was like, I know I'm supposed to get protein, so here we go. <laughs> um, but right. yeah, um, but you don't. Uh, the normal person doesn't need um, astronomical amounts of proteins, and the best way to get protein really is just you know eating your vegetables, etc. So. Yeah, but that is a, a question I used to get all the time. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm not struggling in that department. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, that's, that's a common thing. Um, one of the questions I was Googling, like, questions that people ask, like vegetarians or vegan um, vegans. And so one of the questions that came up was, um, if you're a vegan or vegetarian, would you date someone who was not, so who was a, a meat? So, as a vegan, would you date a non-vegetarian or a vegan person, woman? I think that that depends on you. 
like in your reasons for being vegan because um we've been talking about health but a lot of people's at least part um of their reason for being vegan is because of like animal cruelty um you know i know people kind of want to like turn a blind eye to it or whatever but the way that meat like all this mass meat the way that you're able to just go to any one of a hundred different places nearby your house and always find chicken beef pork burgers mcdonald's burger king making a thousand trillion you know um burgers a day and you know a billion chicken nuggets etc is you know because they basically um industrialized the you know the food industry so the conditions and the chemicals they use and the way that they um raise these animals is like deplorable um and honestly disgusting uh, as well i mean you could i'm not gonna go into detail but if someone's interested they can go on netflix and see um what the health or you know any one of the different um documentaries on it on there so for some people if that is a big part of veganism for them is like animal abuse and stuff like that i would assume they probably would have a problem if their spouse was you know wolfing down you know chicken and you know steak and different things like that if you know animal you know suffering and stuff like that bothers them um another thing is that clearly if if you are not like solid and like being like a vegan because like you get to a certain point I, I feel like for myself and even other people that I talk to and uh even like you mentioned earlier in the show that meat becomes like almost like disgusting like to you or it's not like uh, it's not as a uh, palatable um so if you like get to that point then anybody could eat meat or whatever and it's not gonna tempt you it may bother you in that if you're really you know gone far that the smell or the whatever is like displeasing to you then that may be a irritant but um one of my main concerns would be like being tempted you know like if you just became a vegan six months ago and you know you're living with somebody that's constantly frying up bacon and you know sizzling steaks and you know all this different stuff um that could be tempting to you um so i would uh you know i could see some people not wanting to date someone that eats me also to a lot of vegan people which is like no real evidence for this but they really think that everybody that eats meat is gonna like fall over and croak any day and it's like you know a lot of you know people is doing all kind of stuff is people smoke cigarettes like i said drink do hard drugs all kind of stuff and live into old age so nobody really knows what the formula is for you know having a long life and you know and whatnot but um i i some vegan people i know feel as though they're going to get older with their spouse and then their spouse is either going to be like a, a, um, a liability in that they're constantly sick. They got all this diabetes and all these different problems with their health and they got to now take them to appointments and care for them and stuff. Um, as opposed to in their mind, if a person is vegan, they're going to kind of be healthier and, you know, more ind- independent longer and stuff like that. Um, which, like I said, I don't know if that's necessarily true, but, um, so those are kind of like some of the things, but like my woman is not vegan. Um, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't really bother me. I don't know. I guess because like the majority of people are not vegan. So it's kind of like, if you get bothered by that is you probably like have started to delve into almost being like a, a zealot about you know vegan and making it almost like a religion or some type of like a spiritual stance or something um and also too in my opinion i think you can eat healthy without eating vegan and you can eat meat and be eating a lot healthier than a vegan person like i mentioned earlier that's eating a lot of processed foods or a lot of carbs so um yeah i guess it, you know like i said it just depends on you i know some vegan people that would never date a person that eats meat and then there's people like me that honestly i just don't kind of really care that much and also too like we talked you know our previous episodes were like you know touching on dating and stuff like that 
is you really trying to like shrink the pool <laughs> like even even more and smaller than it already is is like i wasn't you know really willing to uh you know to do, to do that so you know if you go if you got all these requirements a person's salary a certain level of intelligence their looks and them being funny and all this different stuff and then you want to add that they, they also got to be vegan it's like you're going to be working with like a crazy small pool of people but um yeah i guess more power to you but but yeah, yeah i think um for me i since i'm not vegetarian anymore i wouldn't mind dating someone who was vegetarian or vegan as long as they wouldn't um try to make me guilty for what i'm eating and i don't mean like if i'm eating poorly then yes like have a discussion with me but don't uh, make me feel guilty because i'm you know eat a piece of chicken every now and then <laughs> so right. as long as Open we are respecting each other then that's fine and <clears throat> i mean i don't mind like you know even when you know for example um like i have a friend that's plant-based which i i have a question about that um next but and so we can go out to dinner and that's fine or even when you're here or wherever and if we go to a vegan or vegetarian restaurant that's fine like because i've ate that way so um but it, so it wouldn't matter as long as someone's not like you know pointing their finger at me from what i eat it doesn't matter um, and so that's uh, my question, and I don't really understand, and I don't know if you know, like, what exactly is plant-based, because I know what vegan is, obviously I know what vegetarianism, but what differentiates plant-based from the other two? Honestly, I have no idea. Plant-based sound like vegan to me. I don't know, like, what, I'm, or maybe, maybe a plant-based person, maybe the difference is that they don't eat processed food. So they don't eat dairy, they don't eat um, meat, and 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 they don't eat anything processed. Maybe, but I honestly don't know. I haven't heard anyone like address themselves as plant based, but making it as like something separate from being vegan. Yeah, <clears throat> I I don't know. It's like I, people, my friends say, you know, well, I'm eating plant based. I'm like, but what, is that vegetarian? Is that like? I guess I don't. Would that make sense though? The maybe just not eating processed foods. That that would make sense. Um, and I'm making that up. That could be totally <laughs> wrong. But like I said, any any time I've ever heard someone use the term plant based, like I have a like I'm I'm I have a plant based mm -hmm. diet. That was basically like a synonym for vegan. Okay. You know, it was like just used instead of um saying vegan i don't i never had a conversation i really heard anyone like correct someone where someone was like oh you're vegan right and they're like no i'm plant-based i've never like experienced that before so i'm not 100 percent sure okay so um that's pretty much all i of the questions any other um or any final thoughts on vegan lifestyle vegetarian lifestyle I think that one of the important things that we didn't uh, really touch on is people that are vegan or vegetarian or whatever, in my personal opinion, I think people got to like lighten up a little bit. Like if you're just like being obnoxious and like, like judging people and like basically just kind of being like that super religious, like relative that's like always telling you that you need to get right with God and you need to stop doing this and stop doing that. Like nobody wants to hear that. Like, I don't think that's ever like converted anyone to anything like being obnoxious um, and like self-righteous and pretentious about, you know, whatever, because at the end of the day, I could be like a eighth degree black belt in veganism and then get hit by a bus. Like, you know, it doesn't make like a force field or something that guarantees you to, you know, um, live on forever. And also, too, it's not like there's some example where one person ate meat and they died at 65 and another person was vegan and they lived to be 200. It's like people are all pretty much living and dying or you know around the same ages now like i said you may if you are if you are healthy not even necessarily vegan but if you are healthy you would ideally have a higher quality of life as you get older in terms of aches and pains and ailments etc but um but yeah i just think that you know uh 
people, like you said, should avoid being judgmental because no one wants to ask. Sometimes a person may genuinely be curious or want to know or maybe be thinking about, you know, going going vegan or vegetarian or whatever. But if they come to you and you're being all like judgmental and pretentious about it, they that might just turn them off, you know. So, um, yeah, I think people should chill on that. But otherwise, um, no, I think that I think that's pretty much I think, you know, we covered the the main things. Right, my uh, final thought is um, I really appreciated that 10 months. I wish I, I still kind of wish. I'm not, I'm not going to beat I didn't beat myself up about it. Um, but I, I do wish I, sometimes I do wish I did make that year. But 10 months, that was good. Um, and I will say that I learned a lot um, in that time. And the way that it, it kind of helps me now is when I don't get a lot of vegetables and just kind of stray away from like eating healthy or I feel it like I can notice it pretty immediately and I'm like okay nope I gotta you know get back to putting more vegetables in my diet like I can recognize um that and that's really I think a positive thing too is that um, I just know what it feels like when I'm not eating properly and just you know the benefits of that so um and just it, it helped to change my my eating habits of what I liked because like I said I didn't like to eat vegetables and now there are a, a lot that I do like currently so um but yeah and that's that's important too I'm sorry I know that a lot of people focus on vegetables which is definitely good to eat vegetables but um I think fruit is probably more important even than vegetables I struggle I never had a problem with eating vegetables even when I ate meat I always liked vegetables but fruit has always been tough for me because one week you go and the grapes taste amazing and then the next week you go and it tastes like nothing or like they're sour and it's like you know fruit is not very consistent mostly because it's not the same fruit like fruit is coming from all over the world and you know different things so you may not really pick up on it but you're not getting the same apples you got last week or you know last month or whatever the case may be but um eating eating fruit is honestly going to do more for your body than eating a lot of vegetables because mostly because a lot of vegetables are starchy. Um, whereas a lot of fruits like your apples, your berries, um, kiwi, pears, like different things, plums, they're like more of what they call like astringent. So they like kind of help clean out your body, clean out your liver, clean out your kidney, clean your cells, etc. So I just want to make that one final thing that, regardless of what type of lifestyle you have in terms of diet try to implement fruit as well and you know not just focus on the vegetables yeah and it's weird too I, n- I never had an issue with fruit it, it was more so vegetables i didn't eat so but no eat your fruits and your vegetables and i, I think and just like <laughs> um don't be afraid to try things because you'll be surprised at what you may like and I think that's what I learned right. too. Is like, because I'd be like, what? I am not eating. And then I'm like, oh, snap, this is good. So I think it's. it's- oh, I'm sorry. Okay. One more, one more thing. <laughs> one of the things that helped me is that I basically just tried to eat things that I always ate and I just removed the unhealthy parts of it or switched things out. So instead of eating spaghetti that had, um, like white whole wheat pasta i would get like chickpea pasta Mm -hmm. and instead of putting meat in the sauce i would just put like a ton of like bell pepper onions mushrooms whatever you know people could change it you know what they like more or whatever but um i uh i go i like a lot of asian food because a lot of asian food is very easy to just not put the meat in it like if you have pad thai pad thai doesn't taste super different if you get vegetable pad thai instead of chicken or shrimp or like whatever pad thai um even a lot of um mexican foods like burritos and tacos they taste still taste pretty good with vegetables instead of meat um and without the cheese you know just for me personally so um a lot of the stews and soups pretty easy to make those taste good without um meat and cheese and just try to be as creative and diverse as you can so that you don't get tired and end up like reverting back so that's my absolute final thing (laughs) (laughs) hopefully no that's good that's good
Yeah, so um, I think that's it. And I, I, you know, I think we can come back to this is going to be an ongoing conversation too. But I think it's important um, um, just to discuss like there really are different ways to to eat and be healthy, and it, um, changing your your eating habits and lifestyle doesn't mean that you can't like eat good and, and be satiated and enjoy what you're eating, etc. So yeah, so thank you, Gio, for coming back on in another episode of The Male Perspective with Gio. Thank you all for listening to Internal Rambles. Take care of yourself, and if you are able, take care of each other. And until next episode, this is your girl, Rochelle.